So I think as an artist, it's nice to have the artist touch from the beginning to end. Instead of uh, using a canvas to wrap it, I use a wooden panel. Just because of the resin, I have to keep it nice and level so that it doesn't pull towards the center. This one is for a 36 by 36 piece. Got my four sides, now I'm gonna go frame it. I'm Paola Gracie, I'm an artist and chemist. Practicing chemist during the day and then at night I, is when I start to paint and become alive. The thicker the border, I love the way that the paint looks when it's dripped over it. And so I, I place these to make sure I have a nice 45 degree angle before I add the nails to it to reinforce it. So now I'm gonna add the plywood to the top. And this of course will be my background. And let me switch out to the staple gun. So I'll paint the background and then I'll apply the glitter and then uh, I'll do several layers of resin. And then this is what the pieces actually look like before I apply the acrylics. I don't use the typical easel, my easel is a ground. Are you mixing chemicals into some of the paint? Yeah, so I'll add like a pouring medium to it. It's like an experiment for me. I started working with this technique of painting back in 2004. I've noticed over the years it's gotten better and a lot of it has to do with my documentation. So I, just like I would in the laboratory, I document in my lab notebook all my materials, you know, all my observations, and then I use that information to work on the next piece. The colors I use mostly are like jewel tones and blues, and then I guess a lot of it, uh, the colors that I use are influenced by science and, and growing up in South Florida, the colorful atmosphere. And, and so I like to throw in a shrill orange or a yellow, a neon yellow into the piece. They just speak to me in different ways and I don't know that people understand it. It's just, you know, how they speak to me is how I choose what color will go next to the other. I don't ever let the canvas kind of stop. This is where I lift it up and let gravity do its thing. There we go. What do you think? <laughs> You see how some start to really take off and then others are, it's kind of like the race of the drips. So I try to control it, but at the same time, it's more of an organic flow to it. And so I'll just assist them and kind of give them momentum. All right, Gino. We can bring it down now. All right, and that's the end. I like the way it is, I bring it back down, I have to leave it to dry for a couple days, and that's it. Both of my grandmothers were artists, and so I was always exposed to that. When I was studying, doing my undergraduate in chemistry, I always took a painting class to help distress. And there is when I started to merge the science and the art. When I was taking a biochemistry class, Whatever I was studying, I would incorporate into the paintings. And the piece that I just did live today was um, the kinetic energy series. I love looking at images from the Hubble telescope. You know, the amount of kinetic energy out there in, in outer space, we don't know, you know, much. But the way that I like to exhibit it is where it looks like it's going against gravity. So it kind of confuses people and they think I throw it. And so I kind of like that, you know, unknown and, and that mystical aspect of how did she get the paint to do what it did. So this piece is from the Spectra series. When you look at um, certain chemicals under the microscope, a lot of them have that holographic effect, and it's just beautiful. I wanted to try to find a glitter that would represent that. When I'm in the laboratory analyzing different substances, um, we use you know, liquor chromatography, and so these are what my results look like at the end of the day. I've had several people ask me, well, why don't you cover the acrylic on the top? 
with the resin. And uh, my answer to them is, well, I like the texture because if I were to cover it with, you know, the resin, you lose that effect of the, the matte against the high sheen. It just adds like this, you know, depth to it. And then just the, the glitter, when you walk past it, the, the piece becomes alive, especially when you have the right lighting and really demands your attention. It's so much fun to work with.